Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of Favorite Live Album by Year. 30 days of September, 30 years of favorite live albums, and 30 runner-ups. So you get 64, 30. Double the money. Buy one, get one free here in the month of September here in 2021. So uh, we only have a few days left today. We have arrived at 1992. Uh, another year that uh, didn't have a ton of of favorite live albums for me, but a couple that were really, really exemplary and really stand out, uh, really stood out, I should say. Uh, for me, it came down to like four or five, and you know, I had to make some hard choices. But I think uh, both my winner and my runner-up, either one could be number one here. But uh, I kind of I had to like one. I, I've played more than the other. One of them is, to me, I think the quintessential live album by the band, or, you know, perhaps. Uh, the other is the quintessential li live album from that particular lineup of the band. All right, and it's, uh, yeah, anyway, with that, I, I'm thinking of, like, all these things I could say about each one, but let's just kind of go one at a time. So I'm going to go today, anyway, from my winner. Uh, this live album, which basically it's a box set, actually. Uh, four CD set released October 30th, 1982. 1992, sorry, uh, recorded on various dates between 1973 and 74, released uh, on EG Virgin, uh, like I said, on October 30th, 1992. King Crimson, The Great Deceiver. So this is back, if you guys remember, uh, the early 90s uh, multi-disc box sets usually came out in these big long things, these long contraptions. This was indicative of the early 90s. You don't really see much of this anymore. And, you know, nowadays I... I kind of cringe at these a little bit because they don't really fit on shelves and it's like relegated to my closet. I got a whole bunch of these and, uh, you know, really when it came out, I was, you know, of course, all into this. This, of course, is the uh, Fripp, Wetton, Bruford, Cross lineup of the band, right? Just a great, uh, great box set here with all sorts of information. And then you've got, uh, you know, the discs. So the discs come inside. You got four of them. All recorded at different places. Some, probably some of the best live crimson, if not the definitive live crimson of this particular era of the band. And, and so much stuff here. Let's see how much information I can get for you here. So uh, disc one recorded at the Palace Theater, Providence, Rhode Island, June 30th, 1974. And again, you do get lots of similar tracks on a lot of these. Here you got uh, Walk On, No Pussyfoot, and Starting Things Off. Got to have some soundscapes to start it off. Then you got Lark's Tongues and Aspic Part 2. Lament Exiles, a big long improv, a voyage to the center of the cosmos. Easy Money, uh, a little improv with Providence worked in, a fracture and starless. CD2, you've got uh, continued uh, songs from, from Providence, Rhode Island. 21st Century Schizoid Man, Walk Off from Providence and No Pussyfoot. And then you've got uh, Walk On to Glasgow from Glasgow Apollo in Scotland, October 23rd, 1973. Sharks, Lungs, and Lamad, Lamsip, whatever the hell, Larks, Tongues, and Aspect Part 1. Book of Saturday, Easy Money, uh, We'll Let You Know, The Night Watch, Improv, uh, Tight Scrummy, uh, Peace and a Theme, Cat Food, and then you got a couple songs from Penn State University, June 29, 1974, Easy Money, uh, If It Is For You, But Not For Us. And then continuing on in the on disc three, you've got uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania from the Stanley Warner Theater, April 29th, 1974. Uh, Walk On, The Great Deceiver, uh, Bartley Buttsford, Exiles, another improv, The Night Watch, Dr. Diamond, Starless, Talking Drum, Lark's Tongues and Aspect Part 2. Uh, and then some additional songs from Penn State, which were tacked onto the end of disc two. You got, um, you know, another improv, another lengthy improv. Then on disc four, you got Toronto Massey Hall, June 24th, 1974. The Massey Hall place always sounds so great. I always hear uh, Martin Popoff and Rick Levante talking about uh, the Massey Hall's classic performances that they've seen there. Here you've got uh, four tracks from Massey Hall. You've got uh, the Golden uh, Walnut Improv, the Night Watch, Fracture, and another improv, Clueless and Slightly Slack. And then uh, Zurich uh, Volkschatz, November 13th, or November 15th, 1973, in Germany. Walk on No Pussy Footing, Improv, Some More Pussy Footing, Lark's Tongues and Aspect Part 1, uh, Law of Maximum Distress Part 1 and 2, Big Lengthy Improvs, Easy Money, Some More Pussy Footing, Improv, and The Talking Drum. So uh, 
a lot of King Crimson here. And I think if you're a fan of this particular lineup, which I am, this is a must own. Uh, it's funny, it's, it's I, I think there is, they, they released uh, later on a kind of more stripped down version of this. That's not the big box with the booklet, but just basically the discs in a different sort of packaging. But either way, monstrous stuff. And the, uh, the recordings are pretty damn good. So uh, this, I remember when this came out, I listened to this all the time, and I still like to pull this out every now and then. Uh, very cool stuff. So that's my that's gonna be my pick today. It's just it's it's just so massive and all encompassing from that lineup. I think it's hard to avoid, you know, that as my number one. But my number two, pretty close. And I I will say I easily listen to this way more than the Crimson. But the Crim the Crimson is just like every now and then you want to go dive into that and just explore all the richness there. But this is more of an easy listening. Can pop this on any time. My wife's a big fan of this live album, and uh, it's kind of like a greatest hits uh, of this band for the most part um, in that it, it contains plenty of classic uh, older tracks and a lot of the more recent at the time tracks so uh, Queen live at Wembley 86 you know of course this is the, the kind of big return to for Queen back to the big stage uh, you know Queen were kind of relatively quiet for a few years in the mid 80s you know they had the the big album with the game and then Hot Space was a major disappointment and then the next couple albums especially here in North America didn't really sell much at all uh, no, no real hit singles here did better over in the UK but this was a you know a big return from Queen this is you know of course about a year after the Live Aid thing and the Triumph and Heroes are back on the big stage, uh, released on May 26, 1992, recorded July 12th, uh, 1986. So uh, it was just really great to see this in a album format. And of course, there's also the concert video as well of that classic uh, concert from, you know, six, six years it took us to see this. And uh, of course, you know, here you got uh, One Vision, Tie Your Mother Down in the Lap of the Gods, Seven Seas Awry, Tear It Up. A Kind of Magic, Under Pressure, uh, Another One Bites the Dust, Who Wants to Live Forever, uh, I Want to Break Free, uh, a Brighton Rock Solo, Now I'm Here, that's disc one. So again, a lot of the old, a lot of the new of Queen. Uh, you know, not a ton of stuff from the really early albums, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, this is 1986, so they're obviously Queen morphing a bit over the years. Uh, disc two, you got Love of My Life, Is This the World We Created?, and then uh, a little, you know, kind of uh, 50s medley of tracks here. You're So Square, Baby, I Don't Care. Hello, Mary Lou. Uh, Tutti Fruity, Give Me Some Love. And then you go, they, moves into, they move into Bohemian Rhapsody. From there, you got Hammer to Fall, Crazy Little Thing Called Love, Big Spender, Radio Gaga, We Will Rock You, Friends Will Be Friends, We Are the Champions, and God Save the Queen. So, yes, Queen Live Killers is, is obviously... Uh, the live album more suitable for those who really love the 70s stuff and that's what you really gravitate towards whereas this is more of the the biggest hits from the 70s and certainly the 80s uh, thrown into a very accessible package that uh, you know really lets Freddie stand out. I mean this is this is all Freddie. If you want to experience the greatness of Freddie Mercury as a live performer and entertainer and frontman, a bona fide rock star, this is all Freddie. That's the reason why uh, this is such a go-to for maybe not the hardcore Queen fans, right? Like I'll use my wife as an example. So she is she enjoys Queen quite a bit, uh, but likes all the more popular songs, loves the more popular songs. So for her, well, like when any time, like a uh, perfect example, we're sitting out by the pool in the summer and we're trying to figure out music that we both could listen to and enjoy together out by the pool because we don't really listen to the same kind of music. Uh, she will put this on fairly regularly because we both can get into it. And she loves this because, like I said, it's got all of the, the songs from the band that she really likes. Uh, whereas, you know, if it, if it was me making the decision, I like this a lot too. Uh, I would probably, you know, go for either a studio album or the live killers if I really want to hear that early, early Queen stuff. But I, I do enjoy this quite a bit. I've watched the, uh, the, the Blu-ray or DVD of this a ton of times. It's just a really great performance. And sure, would I prefer some songs in the set over others? Yeah, but it was 1996, 1986, and uh, this, you know, was perfect for them at the time. So yeah, Live at Wembley, 86 is my runner-up. Um, this is the winner. Great Deceiver, King Crimson. Uh, another one, the ACDC Live was probably my number three in this whole thing. So just uh, let you know what that was. So uh, yeah, there you go. 
Queen, King Crimson, my two picks for today in this uh, episode of Favorite Live Album by Year. we got a couple left, so uh, stay tuned for more of them. Please list your favorites in the comments below. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow with another episode of Favorite Live Album by Year. Uh, in, the, in the meantime, we've got coming right up. We've got my interview and discussion with Greg Hart from Cats in Space. That was a lot of fun. That's coming up uh, right after this. And then tomorrow we've got album homework assignment this week. It is Rich Catino and Jamie Laszlo going head-to-head -head with their picks. That'll be happening tomorrow morning, so stay tuned for that. And a lot more here on the channel. We've got the Hudson Valley Squares coming up on Monday. We've got In the Prog Seat on Tuesday. Wednesday is What's Hot with Sea of Tranquility Day. we got some new releases for you, and we got a special episode uh, with Stephen Reed and myself where Stephen is going to show you guys off some really cool Uriah Heap box sets that have come out real recently. So uh, it's all about heap. Tons of heap. A heap of heap. That's coming up on Wednesday. Thursday at the Monsters Den, we've got uh, Rich Catino and Chris Allo and myself. We're each going to be uh, talking about some of our favorite Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee partnership films so in other words those it could be hammer films amicus films whatever but those uh lee and um cushing team up films that we just absolutely love we're each gonna be talking about our top five so stay tuned for that uh, friday morning at the fun house with mr martin popoff and then we've got another album homework assignment uh, coming up on sunday so a uh, lot's happening next week so stay tuned for that and a lot more Please subscribe if you haven't already. Click on that notification bell so you get alerted of all of our content. If you want to make a channel donation so we can keep kind of buying more uh, albums and CD or CDs and, and uh, movies and stuff to talk about here on the channel, that's what we use those funds for. So consider doing that via the Ko-Fi link below. We've also, another way you can help the channel is to uh, purchase some of our merch. We've got the, uh, the, the link to our merch site all sorts of Sea of Tranquility t-shirts and hoodies and hats and caps and stickers and coffee mugs and things like that. We've got a ton of designs, so uh, stop on over there and see what we got and uh, maybe something that will uh, pique your fancy. And uh, while you're at it too, make sure you check out our webzine, which has now been on the internet for 20 years this year. So uh, thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Pete Pardo. Enjoy your weekend, but we'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.